pledge their support. I also like to say thank you to my family, my wife and my three kids for giving me the opportunity to, for releasing me in this lockdown to be here today. Because of, this, of time, I would like to dive in straight into my presentation. Today, I'll be talking about energy management in context of today's reality. What really is our reality today? Our reality today is that we are faced with something that has never happened before in our generation. I'm sure if any of our forefathers or our grandparents has told us the story of the plague, the flu in 1918, we'll all be wondering how exactly did that happen? But we are privileged to be in, an, in, a, in, in a age where we have technology to aid us. You can imagine then if there was a lockdown, they couldn't communicate. But here yeah, we could communicate. So that's our reality now. Our reality is that some, we are fighting an invisible pandemic. We are at war with an invisible pandemic. But apart from that, we are into energy. And I would like to start by giving a short definition of what energy management is. And my focus on this definition is strategy. Energy management is a strategy, the strategy of adjusting and, and optimizing energy using systems and procedures so as to reduce energy requirements per unit of output while holding a constant or reducing total cost of producing the output from this system. Focus here or keyword here is strategy. And this strategy is a combination of systems and procedures. And this is what um, energy management entails. Uh, going forward, this is what energy management entails. And this is what I would like us to focus on in terms of executing anything that has to do with energy management or energy efficiency. There must always be a strategy a strategy that must have been pre-defined or pre-designed to achieve an expected goal in terms of reduction in energy usage and energy cost. Uh, I brought in this slide to really give us some, um, to, to really focus or to deep dive on what the reality of today is. The reality of today is we have four E's when it comes to sustainable development the economy. The economy is what everything revolves around. Energy that we are focused on or that we happen to be in the sector is, cannot stand alone without the economy. The economy is a driver of whatever we want to do. Also the environment, everybody's talking about it. And of course, education. Going forward, uh, I have a slide that has our details of this global outlook uh, and I would like to focus on that now. What's happening with the economy globally? Everybody is beginning to focus on local manufacturing. Of course, we are now in a global village and that is why the pandemic has affected us so much. But everybody now is beginning to think inward. Now, why was the global economy so easy for all of us to assess before because we the cost of manufacturing in nigeria energy is 40 percent of the cost of manufacturing and this is a, there's a situation whereby companies make a product in nigeria and somebody makes a similar product somewhere else in the world because they have access to cheaper cost of energy you have access to cheaper cost of energy and we, we um, the cost becomes even cheaper than you that you are producing locally. But we, because of what is happening currently, everyone is now focusing on local manufacturing. I had a story recently of Japan already planning to start making some things locally, cutting ties gradually with China. These are some of the things that will start happening. And when this happens, it means we can put in more investment into energy generation, into renewable energy for the economy. Of course, there'll be more investment in renewable energy, like I said. There'll be also a focus on the health sector. It becomes a priority now. Of course, we all know what has been going on. Uh, extreme acceleration, of course, in digital economy, in training, and um, 
training for people and a lot of us are now working from home so that also helps the economy to continue to move you can see what is happening with home entertainment home fitness home education but like i said earlier this dovetails into a positive outlook for the energy sector we begin to have more use of renewable energy like we see with the renewable energy association of nigeria supporting um health care centers with grids with, with um renewable energy solutions with some um, solar PV installations. That begins to happen because people now see the need for this. There's also more efficient use of energy, which is also one of the reasons why we're having this discussion. How can we have more efficient use of energy so that we can have energy cost reduction? And then people engagement, and most importantly, the leadership. Leadership needs to take the forefront. There is no strategy without the leadership. Everything rises and falls on leadership. Every decision in our homes, in our small organizations, in our corporates, in our big organization in corporate Nigeria, and of course, from the government. But let me tell you something. We're talking about the environment. We are seeing air quality updates. We're seeing a lot of people talking about reduction in carbon emissions and stuff like that because of the lockdown. But that's the funny thing about energy management or energy efficiency. Energy efficiency means does not mean we will, we will sacrifice the comfort levels of people. Because while we're having this green or better atmosphere or better air quality, is because we're not moving around. People are not moving. So what it means is that we must create an avenue for people to move, to achieve what they have to achieve on a daily basis and not deplete or destroy the ozone layer and not have negative impact on the environment. And so that means we must make plans and strategy to achieve our sustainability goals. And of course, education. And that's why we have people like the ETC, organizations like Stratagem and even the, the EDC and other, com other associations that are doing trainings, training awareness, awareness on energy management and energy efficiency, uh, capacity development, renewable energy and energy efficiency. Going forward, what are the key questions to ask when we want to look at energy management strategy. Like I said earlier, it's a strategy that must be adopted by top management, that must be adopted by you who is the CEO of your own organization, by you who is the CEO of your own family. We must adopt these strategies. And what, these are the questions we need to ask ourselves. How much energy is consumed? How is the energy consumed? Where is the energy consumed? When is the energy consumed? If we want to do renewable energy, we need to know when the energy we want to supply is consumed because we can maximize energy generation from renewable during the day or from solar during the day and of course from wind energy around the clock. So what is the quality of energy that is required? Who is responsible for energy use? This is, in, this is a two-in-one question. Who is responsible? Who is also responsible for the use at the point of use? Do they know how the, the impact they have on energy use for that particular organization? Uh, in order for us to address these queries, of course, we need to look at energy audits, and this is the purpose of energy audits. It helps us to carry out verification, monitoring, and analysis of energy use, including submission of technical reports con containing recommendations. So this is what energy management and energy efficiency does for us. I want to give a, a, a small example of the impact of having a strategy. When, when I used to work for the Nigerian bottling company, there was this plant that there was no pipeline gas supply to that plant, but we're able to get gas to that plant via um, compressed natural gas trucks, cryogenic trucks. And this plant was using boiler steam, it was using steam from a boiler. The cost of generating steam from that boiler, we invested money in a CHP plant by buying a waste heat recovery boiler. That waste heat recovery boiler the cost, the payback was one year, meaning we were able to recover the cost of that investment from the fuel we will have used from an independent boiler. We got the waste it from a, gener a gas generator, channeled it into a waste recovery boiler, and the payback was one year. That's, and I'm talking about at that time before the, the, die, the drop or the Naira devaluation, it was about 1 million euros for a year for the cost of steam generation for that facility. And it was paid back in a year by just moving 
taking a conscious effort by a strategy that was developed and implemented and the, the benefit was a one-year payback of such an investment. Uh, going forward, how can we uh, steps to energy efficiency? Of course, um, I'll run through these because I've mentioned some of them. We need to understand our present usage. That means we need to carry out um, a, an analysis of what we're using. We need to understand our cost. That we cannot be talking about energy and we'll not talk about costs because that is critical. The finance guys, the CEO of such organizations, the minister of power, the government, everybody, the state governor, energy can mean kilowatt hours to me as an engineer, but to those guys, it means cost, Naira and Kobo. It means dollar. So we must, as we try to understand usage, we need to understand costs because these things, both of them relate. And as engineers, though we always talk about kilowatt hours, the, the people who take decisions most of the time talk about Naira and Kobo. So we must be able to also carry out a benchmark analysis. We need to benchmark ourselves. I'm, I'm, I'm a, I have a bakery. I produce 1,000 bread in a day. Which bakery across the city, across the world, is in the same capacity? And what is the energy they are consumption for the same output? So we'll be able to benchmark ourselves and see how we can improve. We need to understand when, why, we need to optimize the supply. That's from the point of receiving our supply. We need to maximize efficiency. We need to retrofit our equipment, match the equipment, and we need to find the savings opportunity on a regular basis. We need to find the saving opportunities on a regular basis. Going forward, I would like to quickly talk about some areas of development. I think my time will soon be up. I have about three to four minutes more. So what are the areas for development in the energy industry? in Nigeria. Of course, like I said earlier, this comes also to the government. What are the policies that are available? What are the regulatory changes we need to make? Now we can see that a lot of things are changing rapidly. Um, power also has to do with technology improvement. So government needs to bring about a regulatory change, something that the boost have the stamp, the authority, the political will, the economic will, of the government. This needs to happen. This is a major, major area for development in the energy industry. Of course, like I said earlier, gas-based solutions. Gas, of course, is a greener fuel than our normal um, diesel. So we need to encourage more gas-based solution across the value chain. Renewable energy, this, what, other, what other thing to say about this? I was, I was on a trip to Germany earlier this year. Germany is getting about 60 gigawatts of the electricity demand from renewables, both wind and solar mostly. So this is a huge opportunity for Nigeria. And like I said, um, a lot of people know me now with this saying, what you cannot measure, you cannot manage. We need to encourage metering and monitoring solutions. The, the guy that is the, the generating company that is getting gas from the Nigerian gas company, they don't get gas without measurement. The discos that get electricity supply from the transmission company, they don't get this supply without a meter. Without, because when you go to their site every day or to their social media and do they tweet it. They send this update to us. We, we add 500 megawatts of electricity from the transmission company of Nigeria. So every point of the value chain, both for the users, the end users, both organizations where we have just a generator in our homes, all of us need to embrace metering and monitoring solutions. New businesses and bilateral trades, of course, we need, to inter we need to work with other countries in the world to see how we can improve on knowledge, to see how we can improve on energy in our own sector. A lot of people have implemented solutions that Nigeria is just trying to implement. We can learn from them. Of course, we have new solutions that I know one of my panelists will be talking about smart homes. And these are areas where we need to embrace. There is a whole lot of opportunity in this area. Smart homes, smart cities, new technology, internet of things. We need to embrace this because this can also help us to achieve more energy efficiency in our energy use. Of course, we've seen, and of course, one of my panelists will also be talking about funding. And this is also another area of opportunity. And when we look at every sector, when we look at every organization, when we look at the companies that have lasted over 100 years, when we look at countries that have continued to 
develop. One thing is key. One word is key, and that is innovation. As a country, as companies, as individuals, we need to find innovative ways to continue to give solutions to the power industry in Nigeria. We need to embrace those who are coming up with these innovative ideas. We do not need to push them aside. We need to encourage them. We need to listen to them. We need to give those innovative solutions a trial. We will make mistakes along the way, but we will improve and we will continue to get better. Going forward, um, I think um, that was, thank you so much. Um, I would like to say this before I end my presentation. We need to have strong strategies. We need to have intentional strategies to bring about major changes in our energy generation in Nigeria, energy distribution, and of course, energy use in Nigeria. And I don't want to keep leaving it to government. I, will, I always tell people, even a CEO in a, in a million dollar company, a CEO in a small company, we need to take it serious. We need to make sure we have a handle on energy use in our organizations. And I would, I would like you to know that you can always reach out to me. My social media handles are open. You can send me a mail. My mail is showing on the screen. I'll be available to hear you, to listen to you, to have a chat with you. Send me a mail. And thank you so much for ETC for giving me this opportunity. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Engineer Dada. That was a wonderful presentation. Very quickly to uh, manage our time more effectively, I'd like to ask Peace Nabugu to now uh, make her presentation on energy smart homes. Peace, are you ready? PC Power Webinar. I am Peace, and um, thank you for having me. So um, I'll take it from where engineer that I left off. We'll be looking at energy smart homes. So I'll just give a quote to say, best way to measure is to be smart. Um, so what is an energy smart home? An energy smart home is an energy efficient home what I would like to call um, a home that utilizes its available energy resources efficiently. Okay, so um, this can be achieved using smart sensors, internet connected apps, you know, to monitor your energy consumption. Um, this, this you can do remotely or you can also do it on site. Now, these appliances can be like your lighting devices, security devices, cooling systems, heating systems, all your utilities, every appliance that uses energy, you can automate and be able to um, monitor its consumption to give you, um, you know, the informed knowledge of how you are consuming your energy and how you can manage it. So, I mean, we are all becoming smart these days. So, uh, um, Currently now with the COVID lockdown, we are all seeing a spike in online um, you know, transformation. But, um, so with that, we need to also make informed decisions in our energy consumption. So having said that, I want to again welcome you to this webinar and thank ETC for the opportunity for us to share this knowledge as well as thank my support system, my team, my colleagues, my family, my husband and children for being quite understanding in this lockdown period for us to have this webinar. So it's great to be here. I would like to share the rationale for us to um, um, consider, you know, upgrading our energy devices to smarter ones. One, I look at it that it's very simple to do. Um, it helps you to understand where and where you need to cut down or manage properly your energy use. Why, why is that so? Because we have scarce energy resources and because we have this uh, scarcity, we need to manage it properly. And for business owners who generate their, uh, their power, they also need to manage this well because 
when you cut down your energy uh, expenses, it will cut down your cost of production, like um, engineer that I have said, that um, the cost of production locally is about 40%. Uh, about 40% goes into energy. So now that we're going to see a spike in local manufacturing, we, we need to, you know, cut down the use of energy. And the only way we can do this is, you know, to automate, to upgrade, to become very smart. And this will also help us uh, cut down climate emission, you know, putting us into, uh, helping us, you know, making our environment more greener. Now, I also put down here that upgrading requires simple smart solutions. So you can use an app to manage all your appliances and you can also use uh, sensors to, especially with your lighting. I, I would like to give an example um, using the hotels. So some of us who must have visited hotels, you can't leave the hotel or you can't even access the hotel room without your, your key. And, and that's when the light comes on, whenever you are in that room. That's because those hotel rooms have been automated, you know, using presence to activate the lights. And um, here in this part of the world, if you move around, you see that during the day, a lot of us still leave our light security lights on. And so many people still using candy scent bulbs, um, in your own living room, I'm sure some places you still leave your lights on, and uh, these are these are practices you need to consciously, um, uh, you know, guide against. So I can I can say for free that <laughs> we're not always conscious of turning off, turning on. So this is the need you need to, or, 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 you know, automate your energy devices in your home so that. When you are not in a room, the light can go off on its own. When you come in, it can come on. And if for any reason you're in a rush, you leave your home without turning off those things, it can inform you real time and you can give the instruction using your mobile device. So it's pretty simple. It's very, um, gives you easy and comfort to do this. So um, moving on. The, the need, the benefits for upgrading to energy smart home cuts across all stakeholders. Uh, so I, I apologize you, for that interruption, please. We had a little, a little technical hitch. Um, my colleague who's the technical person lost his screen, his connection. So he's trying to get you back on. Okay. So you should be seeing your screen now. Should move to the next screen. Are you able to see your screen now, please? Not yet. Okay, okay. I can. It's showing. Go ahead. So I think um, we'll look uh, a little bit behind that screen so that um, we can bring everyone up to speed. Okay, While you want to go to the previous, the previous slide. Okay, there you go. So uh, we're looking at the rationale for, um, you know, home automation or, or business automation in, in your energy use. We looked at the fact that it's simple to upgrade it's needful for every stakeholder, homeowner, installers, real estate professionals to um, embrace energy smart uh, automation right now in, in, in our buildings because one, like I said earlier, we have scarcity of energy resource. 
now that we are also looking at renewable energy investments, we need to properly manage you know, what we are generating. And the best way to do this is to you know, make these automations very simple using smart um, applications. And then we looked at the fact that our smart energy systems are simple, they are quick, they're straightforward, um, but you can achieve this only when you work with certified professionals because they will help to monitor your energy consumption real time. And so I would like to explain a few tools that can be used to um, achieve this kind of uh, automation. So we have what we call the KNX. The KNX is known as the Connex Networks. It's an open source protocol uh, which you can use for designing commercial or domestic buildings. Um, we have another one known as the BMS. The BMS is the Building Management System. This one you can use for commercial applications like the hotel service apartments. I can give an example earlier. That way you walk into a hotel with your key, the lights comes on, and um, when you leave, the light goes out. So um, the hotel, the hoteliers, you know, they take it very serious because it affects their bottom line. And so if you are generating your power or you're running a business, if you are not conscious of your energy consumption, you would be spending more than you need to. I'd like to cite an example. There's a fact that was um, an industry we conducted an energy audit for, and we uh, you know, gave uh, recommendations of things to be retrofitted. So like you can start with simple things like your lightning. So we gave a few tips on the things that needs to be retrofitted things that needs to be changed that consumes a lot of energy after you know installing these devices to monitor where you have energy hogs. Energy hogs are the um, appliances that consume most of your energy that you actually might not even need. So when we you know did the energy audit on the study the, the appliance the use of energy with all, the, all of these appliances we discovered the energy hogs we recommended their retrofitting and after implementation, we did a cost-benefit analysis and discovered that they had cut down 25% of their energy cost. That's how um, impressive it is to you know, upgrade to an energy smart facility. So whether that it be a business, hotel, your own house, you can start with small things like your lightning, like your um, refrigerator, because those things are the things that we need the most. And now that we have this online space, now you have to learn online because of the uh, lockdown. And even post COVID-19, you still need to see how to survive up on online. You need your devices to be powered. You need to use your energy smartly um, to be able to achieve this. So lastly, on my slide, I have the Wiser app. The Wiser app, you can use it remotely to assess all the features and you know, you have connected on your device in your home, you can do this from anywhere. And even in your home, you can use your Bluetooth to uh, actualize this. So lastly, I'd like to talk about the benefits to all stakeholders. Now, to homeowners, it keeps every facility owner, let me not just say homeowners, every facility owner, business owner, homeowner, real estate professional, it keeps you at ease because you are able to um, instruct your device to where you want, you know, where you really want your energy consumption to come at a particular time, you know. And um, so for every business owner, for every facility owner that has, you know, upgraded to a smart facility, you are always at ease, you're always comfortable because you know you are cutting down your energy expense. It also increases business and professionalism for installers. So for every certified installer that um, you know, does a great job, there's always a referral from business to business, from home to home. And Energy Smart Homes also increases premium value for buildings. So if I want to buy a building from you as a real estate agent or owner, if I come in and I'm aware that I will not be spending so much on power. And you tell me this house is what X, Y, Z amount. It's against this other one where I will spend too much. I probably would think of 
you know, picking this one. So it increases um, premium value for, for real estate um, uh, facility owners, right? So uh, we can't overemphasize the fact that we need to upgrade right now. Um, while it might still be new here, in, in Norway, in Sweden, this is hugely embraced. So you don't just, uh, you know, just let your energy run that way. You kind of put in systems that will help you monitor in your presence and out of your presence. You help you monitor your energy consumption and help you monitor your home, especially your security system, so you know when you are safe and when you are not safe. And um, so I think this in the long run will also affect our bottom line. So especially now that we need to become smarter in the ways that we do our businesses and live. So lastly, we can, I will just wrap it up to say that the need for energy smart homes cannot be overemphasized. And the increased need for this requires that we need more certified professionals. So if you'd like to um, get more trainings, you can reach out to EDC, there are a couple of other uh, training centers, but I know ETC, they do a, a, a lot of good job. So if you can, if you'd like to become, you know, more certified in understanding how to install or automate businesses to help them cut down their energy um, expenses, you can reach out to EDC, ETC. You can reach out to me via my social media handles. If you have questions, you can send me an email. Um, I think my email will be shown on the screen shortly. Um, so you can reach out to me, you can send an email to me, you can reach out to me via LinkedIn, you can send me a DM on uh, Instagram if you have questions, whatever. Um, while I'm still here to take your questions, I would like to say thank you to ETC for the opportunity to share your afternoon with you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Peace, for that lovely presentation. The concept of um, smart homes or smart businesses is, is not lost on us. I can relay a very practical example that I had many years, uh, a few years ago, where I observed, um, albeit it wasn't in Nigeria, I observed a senior manager talking to an employee who was working over time. Uh, to tell the employee, you're working overtime is actually costing us a lot of money. The overtime is not approved, and especially if you're getting involved in uh, activity that is not generating the commensurate amount of revenue to pay for the energy that will be consumed by just a few people in the building working overtime. So they take that, that concept very seriously. So very well said. Thank you very much. Very quickly, we'll now go on to the next presenter, who is uh, OMG for short. OMG will now take us to how to finance a renewable energy project. Uh, what are some of the things that you need to know? So OMG, are you ready? Yes, I am. Can you hear me all? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Good. Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the ETC team and my fellow panelists, thank you very much for sharing and, um, shall I say, catalyzing this uh, conversation. Um, what I will say is that uh, finance obviously is <laughs> quite a large subject and financing a renewable energy project can be taken from a number of different angles. So before I go into my presentation, I just wanted to, to speak to, so that I can try and reach everybody, the audience out there. I'd like to say two things. I will be speaking primarily to the developers um, on who develop renewable energy projects. Why am I going that route? Uh, primarily because we've found that over the years, people claim to be in the renewable energy space, but have not had the requisite training as some of my, my panelists have spoken about and the expertise which has led to failed projects so for the benefit of 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 the audience i want to emphasize that it is critical that you work with a trained and certified uh vendor for your services then you will get the best um, out of renewable energy these days, renewable energy can last for upwards of 20 years before you have to do anything. Hence, 
as Mr. Dada spoke earlier on, you know, paybacks have changed and the cost ratios have come down. So with that context being put in there, um, I wanted to explain about the PFAM. Um, I run Mark George Consultants and Mark George Consultants is a management and strategy consulting firm based in Canada and Nigeria primarily. Um, and we work with the private financing advisory network. PFAN is a network set up by Unido um, and REAP based in, 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 in Vienna. And what we do is provide free business coaching and investment facilitation to renewable energy entrepreneurs. We coach them, we help them get their businesses, and then we get them to finance. So once we can do that, we have a closed loop. And part of that closed loop, that ecosystem, is ensuring that they have clients, such as our participants today, some of them, be they commercial and industrial clients, be they retail, uh, uh, residential clients, and uh, you know, uh, SMEs and the like. And then we marry them to businesses. Part of our business model is to ensure that these businesses are credible, have integrity, and have the technical capacity. So moving ahead, what we try and do as PFAN is to ensure that these, these projects get financed and get, get reality. Moving ahead. As a coach, we would work with these businesses to get them to that great level standard and bring in international standards. What are we looking for in the entrepreneurs? Next slide, moving ahead. We look for entrepreneurs that are credible, that have a management team, a strong management team, right? That have a technically viable business, right? So they, they have understanding of the technical technicalities, have under, have, have it, they have a commercial viability, and of course, are going to make an environmental climate impact. Those are core areas that we look at. Financing is in two, slide, two sections. We have projects which are under a million dollars, our micro projects which we work with, and projects which are in the range of a million to 50 million. We, have, we are not technolo we are technology agnostic, so we don't have a specific uh, 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 type of technology. It could be wind, it could be solar, biogas, bio thermal, et cetera, et cetera, that we work with provided it is, uh, um, it, it is climate friendly so, and, and has a climate impact. Moving ahead. This is just a selection criteria. And you will notice that on the third line, there is 20% allocated for the management team. The success of any business is the people. So it's critical and it's un that, that the people are properly vetted and understood and that they have the ability to get it right. So that's what we, we concentrate on. And hence, as a, a business coach, as a mentor, we help to ensure that they are at the right levels uh, uh, to ensure that they deliver. Moving ahead. Impact that we have had across uh, 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 our, our regions, uh, globally, we've leveraged over 1.25 billion investments in 102 projects um, in 25 countries. Um, I, like I said earlier, I'm the Niger co coordinator. There's a West Africa uh, 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 forum that we have of sub-region, East Africa, Southern Africa, and we work together closely. In Nigeria alone, I coordinate over 15 uh, coaches who are available, who have understanding, knowledge to help businesses and entrepreneurs get right in this sector. Next slide, please. Um, today, we have uh, projects waiting and ready to go, um, 69 and 502 uh, in the pipeline. Um, so there's, there's a breadth that is out there that is, that is, that is really quite a, financing is available. People are, are, are ready to do this. In Nigeria, I'll just say, let's just say we've worked with local um, institutions, financing institutions, be they banks, be they uh, uh, um, microfinance banks and be the private equity investment houses to get them trained to understand how they can want have retail products for the consumer and also uh, have 
uh, uh, products for the for the for the for the entrepreneur. So there is a clear value chain that has been created, and it goes on. Moving moving ahead. Let me share some success stories. Green Energy Biofuels is a biofuel company that, for those of us who know Lagos, you will see during the, 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 the summer seasons where there is water hyacinth on the waterways. Green Energy Biofuels takes those water hyacinths, goes through a, a, a refining process, and creates an environmentally friendly gel, which is put, you know, a liquid gel, which is put into a cook stove, and that cook stove is what fires up. Kerosene and, and wood fires create the third largest killer in this country. It's over 100,000 deaths that arise out of indoor air pollution. So this is a clear benefit, a clear business model that is working, and we were able to leverage uh, up to $5 million for this business. Next slide, another, 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 another business. Green Village uh, Electricity, GVE. GVE is another business in which we work with and leverage up to $5 million. They are the largest mini grid operator in Nigeria today, um, providing uh, primarily mini grids across the eastern part of Nigeria, reaching rural and semi-rural communities and getting lighting into these places. This was started, this organization was started about 10 years ago and they have, have now, uh, although we said 5,000, they now have over 10,000 customers and households that they serve. Moving forward. Investors come to us and work with us because we, we bring them credible, shovel-ready products. Products, are, uh, projects, sorry. Projects that are ready, projects that are, 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 are ready to be financed, that have a right team and all of what they're looking. So they come, they do their, their quick due diligence and more often than not, we get investments uh, put together. So the value chain, the ecosystem is clear, is working and, and it's good. Next slide. There's my contact details. Feel free to send me a message and get in touch. Um, let me just finally leave with something here for, for, for the generality. It is critical that you understand that your power is something that you have every day. Power is constant. It is there and you don't know, but you, you, you can't walk into a shop and say, I want to buy power. You go and buy an energy uh, uh, utilizing device, a TV, a phone. you must use power. That consumption of power, that cost is, as, as has been spoken about, is anywhere for any household, for any business, 40%. So in the days ahead, looking to the future, we must be smart. We must be intelligent about what we're doing. Hence the energy efficiency, hence the smart housing. And it's critical that we work through. We must learn to maximize what we have and our expenditure. So it's, it's, it's important. Let me, let, let me state that critically. Do, you must get into energy efficiency and energy uses appropriately uh, uh, going forward. I look forward to engaging with people. Please send me an email, uh, a WhatsApp, um, telephone call. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, OMG, for that wonderful presentation. I know there's a whole lot that has been packed into these three presentations that have um, gone ahead. Uh, ETC, that is Energy Training Center, will be working uh, with the subject matter experts that have presented to you today to bring about a training where you'll get more granular detail of what they're talking about there's not enough time to um, just go through everything that they need to share. And we, we clearly understand that each one of these presenters could actually consume a whole hour to talk about their various topics. Uh, but it's important that we bring this to you to share and create the awareness that the opportunities are there uh, both on the project side and being energy efficient, both in the, in the in the individual residences and commercial industrial buildings, as well as financing for those type of projects, or maybe even a renewable mini grid, on grid or off grid project. So I want to thank 
all of our panelists for that wonderful presentation. We will now go into the question and answer session. And just before we go into the question and answer session, I'd like to also mention to our listeners that we have upcoming webinars as well as training. There is a particular training on uh, introduction to renewable energy and how to use the lessons learned. One of the things that you're gonna be learning during the course of this training is using application software to design uh, a renewable energy project. And it is a very valuable training. Uh, we're doing it for just 15,000 Naira. Uh, feel free to get in touch with us to register for that training. We will now go into the Q&A session. For those who are just joining, you can ask a question by using the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. We have some questions already, and I'd like to go into those questions now. And we'll start with the question to Engineer Dada from Instacan Akman. He says, thanks, Mr. Dada, for the wonderful presentation. I want to believe that demand response and the smart grid will play a major role in an energy efficient system. So I want to ask in what ways can Nigeria tap into this? Um, thank you, um, Afalari, and thank you, um, Isikan, for the, for the question. Uh, we can tap from a very smart grid. Uh, number one, I, I said it earlier, I was speaking to some people earlier, I said the number of times that we have experienced uh, national grid collapse in the last two years is more than the number of months in those two years. And that, at least to avoid that alone, is a big benefit. To avoid the, a situation whereby the total national grid continues to collapse and then the total country goes on a blackout, it's, it's so, so 19th or 18th century. And so we need to really, really embrace the um, smart grid to be able to, um, and to, to be able to overcome such challenges. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Engineer Dad. The next question for uh, Peace, and it's from Lillian. It says, would you advise long existing buildings or businesses to upgrade? Is incorporating smart uh, means to energy cost friendly as compared to the waste which is being avoided? Okay, yes. So as long as that building is still consuming energy and costing you money, um, you should upgrade, you should automate, you should retrofit uh, because you, you don't want to um, be penny wise and pants fully. That's how I'll put it. So it's very necessary. Doesn't matter. It's, it's as long as the building is still existing, you're not demolishing. You're still using that building. Once you identify energy hogs in that building, it's advisable you retrofit. Okay, thank you. Our next question goes to OMG. And it's from Moin, Moin Abiodun. It says, how do local developers get capitalized? Well, typically with um, any organization, uh, whether in, 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 all, in all spaces, the, the three uh, Fs, um, you must have skin in the game. Uh, three Fs, uh, friends, family, and um, I'll leave the rest one for you to do. But you, you, get, you start off, you must start off somewhere. With, with some sort of financing. Once you have a proof of concept, um, some financing model that has shown there is something that you're trying to do, there are funding uh, locally and internationally, and that's where we come in and we can help um, to, to help you get funding uh, for your business. So it would depend on, on, on what it is, but there is local funding um, and things will change in this, in this season. The funding used to be uh, expensive. It, it was uh, two years ago, three years ago at uh, 25% uh, percent, percent plus. Now we are seeing funding coming in at 15 and less. Um, and there are also international funds that are coming 
uh, aggressively to support local businesses. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the next question is from Kenya uh, Tolu, uh, who is a Nigerian. I think he has some investment in Nigeria. His question is this, how do I conduct energy audit for a rental hotel type of property located outside of Lagos State? And do you provide a one-stop shop contract where after the audit, the client can purchase instrumentally different energy conserving apps and gadgets. I'd like to ask um, Peace to take a stab at that and then in engineer Dada can um, add to the response. Um, okay, if, if Peace is not... Yeah, okay, let me go ahead. Um, thanks to Tolu. Um, you can you can write a mail to me at my email ayo at strategenenergy.com and then I will give you a detailed reply. We can what you've asked for, we can offer energy audit services, we can offer post energy audit services, we can offer performance contracting solutions. So um Anything that has to do with energy management through the value chain end to end, we are, we can offer that service to you. So just do me a mail on Ayo at Stratagen. That's A for Apple, Y for Yam, O for Orange at StratagemEnergy.com. And then I'll give you a, a detailed response. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Engineer Data. Next question is for OMG, I believe. It says, do we support waste to energy projects too. That's from Alexander yes. Ackman. Oh yes, very much so. It's uh, one of my uh, e exciting, passionate areas. Um, and uh, I worked on biodigesters. I worked on a five megawatt um, sawdust uh, transformation project. Um, you know, and, and yes, so waste uh, from food, agricultural waste, um, biodigesters, to you know, it's like I just said, you know, uh, where, you know, commercial projects that exist. So you can have even for your home, a biodigester can produce power. Not to talk about commercial and industrial applications. So we do support that, and it's something okay. that I would encourage in this, in this, in, in the in the current season. Yes. Okay. This question is from Alatunji Johnson to Peace, uh, Mr. Zanabugu. I presume that you are an apostle of the smart home gospel. I would like to know if there is any working relationship between private sector players like yourself and the government, that is Ministry of Housing, to ensure that houses in Nigeria begin to adopt smart home tech to promote energy efficiency and conservation in Nigeria. Oh yes, so um, something just started earlier this year and uh, that's what was being worked on before the lockdown. And so we'll be aggressively looked into once post uh, COVID-19 era sets in. Okay, very good. Uh, there's this question, it says, uh, from an anonymous person, it says, on the presentation relating to coaching for renewable energy, how can you engage Kenyan and Nigerian-based experts? And secondly, when are the onboarding terms for business opportunities for clean energy home-based products? And lastly, do you have any direct support assistance with Copa Solar Company? Uh, that's for OMG, I believe. Yes, <laughs> okay. Um, so the, we do have, like I said, um, we do have, I do have colleagues in, in Kenya, um, in, in the, so we have an East African network. Um, I'm part of the West African network, um, of PFAM and there are colleagues in Kenya. Um, I also have relations in, in Kenya with, you know, with, with some business consultants who are there. So, um, somebody can send me, a uh, 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 um, an email and I'll give the, give the details uh, for the onboarding terms and the opportunities that are there are quite detailed. Um, direct support from Copa Solar, 
the local, the, we, have re, we have relationships with UNCOPA as an, as a, as a, as an organization. Um, we, will, we, can, we can do some introductions in that, in that guys. But send me an email and uh, we'll, we'll be able to go through. Okay, thank you. We'll take this one last question, I believe, uh, or maybe two. Uh, this one is for uh, Peace, Nabugu. Says, is there any policy being proposed by NCEEC to the Nigerian government to advise on how energy management bills can be implemented to ensure energy management practices are practiced? Yes, so um, NCEEC is not a policy making organization. However, um, she has made certain recommendations to the government. Like I said, there was something that we started working on in January before the lockdown, which also includes recommendations for smart homes, um, you know, working in collaboration with, with um, real estate professionals. So, yes, there are recommendations to that effect, um, and that will be aggressively pursued once uh, the post-COVID-19 era sets in. Okay, thank you. We'll take two more questions. And the first one is from Godwin Abia. And it's who administers energy efficiency certification in Nigeria and how does one go about it? I believe that's for Engineer Dada. Okay, thank you. Um, currently, I'm the president of Association of Energy Engineers. Association of Energy Engineers is, um, I mean the Nigerian chapter. The Association of Energy Engineers is an, is an association based in the United States of America and it's over 40 years old. I'm also a certified energy manager. We have almost about 20 to 25 certified energy managers in Nigeria now. Uh, so we, we, we are a partner with the AEE also as Stratagem in delivering certific certifications for anybody who is interested in energy efficiency certification. Um, last month, there is already a communication on our social media handles. We conducted our first um, online CEM class and last week, Saturday, uh, stroke son no, this week, Monday rather, we had um, our, the people who have participated in that training in March, the last week before the lockdown, uh, they were able to do their online CEM. They did their exam, a four hours exam online, peer probe for you. So we've tried to also see how we can leverage on technology to overcome the challenges post, uh, posed by COVID-19. So you, if you want to uh, write um, any certified energy exam, or any exams on energy efficiency rather, or any certification on energy efficiency, you can do me a mail and then I'll direct you to the appropriate um, quarters. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. From Talatu Tafa for Engineer Dada as, as well. In what ways can the government incentivize energy efficiency? Oh, okay. Thank you, Tafa. I think you, he asked the question earlier on the Q&A platform and I answered him. Probably that was why he asked that um, uh, uh, the, the follow-up uh, follow question. Uh, okay. Let's quickly run through this. Um, in when Obama was the president of the United States, the federal government in the United States were giving anybody that embraced renewable energy for home or factory 25% tax credit. California as a state doubled that. So anybody who was doing solar on your task, tax returns, you could claim 50% of that. California gave 25%, they matched the federal government's um, incentive. So those kind of incentives, if we have just an incentive like that, you could imagine the number of people who will have probably had solar panels on their roofs in Nigeria today. So those are the kind of incentives we're talking about, things that can be tracked, not just giving it to every Tom, Dick and Harry. Also, in Germany, every November, December, you hardly find a consultant to work with you. If in Germany, most of these consultants are engaged in carrying out annual energy audits and energy reports for organizations because they must submit it as part of their tax returns to the government. And of course, there'll be some added benefits or incentives that come with that. So those are ways we could encourage people to embrace energy efficiency and also see that by embracing it, there is a benefit for them. 
apart from the benefit to the climate, apart from the benefit to the bottom line of the organization, there's added benefit also. Because if somebody wants to invest in getting certified as an energy efficiency practitioner, in Nigeria, it is getting, it is, it is, people are embracing it now. But it is difficult to, engage, to get such people engaged because there is no policy that can embrace, like renewable energy. Now, if you keep training people on solar installation, the market is there to embrace them, to accept them, and to provide an opportunity for them. But for energy efficiency, that is not as smooth as it is for renewable energy. So that's what I will say about that. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Engineer Dada. Unfortunately, our time is far spent. We'd like to bring this session to a close, but in closing, I'd like to ask our panelists to share a thought or two to close. So we'll start with um, Peace Nabugu. Just one last word from you to our participants. Okay, she's not ready. Uh, can I ask uh, OMG to please say one last word to our participants? Yes. Um, in, a, in, in a nutshell, think about this. You're, you're generating your own power. Grid power is costing you X. You don't have it. You generate your own power. That generation of your own power is 200 times more expensive than grid power at the maximum level. You're spending 200 times what you should be spending. If you reduce and you go to uh, energy uh, efficient models and you use renewable energy, you save yourself. And there is no recurring cost. There is no incentive that is required. It's very simple. And there is a double, triple bottom line, helping the environment. This is simple sense, common sense embrace energy efficiency and renewable energy. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Peace Nabuku is now ready. When, your last thoughts to our participants, please. Yes, yeah, sorry. So I, I would like to say that the best way to measure is to be smart. Um, so I encourage you to upgrade your homes, your devices, um, your businesses, your uh, facilities, you know, to smart homes so that you can help us decarbonize, decentralize, and digitalize our energy consumption. So we're here for you and wish you all the best. Thank you. Great. Thank you. And um, Engineer Dada. Okay. Thank you, Afalabi. Thank you, everybody, for joining the call today. I would like to say this. Whatever you are doing, keep doing it. Do the right thing. Don't wait for the government. If you are into energy efficiency, please keep doing it, keep innovating, keep collaborating. As you can see, the field is widening, opportunities are opening up. We have a company like PFAN. We had another one I posted on the AE platform, G Invest or what, I can't remember their name. A lot of funding is available. So whatever you are doing, don't relax. If, you, if as, 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 as soon as, if the fact that you are sure of what you are doing, Please keep doing it. Don't wait for the government. Keep innovating. Keep improving. Keep driving energy efficiency. Keep embracing renewable energy. And before you know it, we will have consolidated so much that even government will be playing catch up with us. Thank you so much. Like Peace said, we are available even on our private time. You can chat us. You can send messages to us. And we can keep this conversation going. Thank you, ETC. And thank you, everyone, for joining. Cheers. Man. Absolutely, Engineer Dan, I might add, the most important thing is get knowledge. And that's why ETC is partnering with the subject matter experts that you have heard on this platform. We will be rolling out some trainings in collaboration with uh, the panelists that you've heard today. Look out for that. And I hope we've all learned one or two things from this discussions. I have read many of your chats, you've commented and sent commendations to the panelists and to ETC for bringing about this insightful webinar. So I wanna thank our panelists for their time and knowledge sharing, and also thank our audience for participating in this webinar. Our next webinar, as you can see on the screen, planning for a sustainable future in the current economic downturn, the energy industry challenges, 
and watch out for more information <clears throat> from us um, on the trainings that we have coming up. The, the first one will be uh, Renewable Energy Solutions for Supporting Nigeria's, um, sorry, that's another webinar, but Introduction to Renewable Energy. It's a training that we'll be rolling out this coming week. Uh, please follow our social media handles on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Uh, that is at etc underscore connect. And on LinkedIn, it's at etc-ng. Our website address is www.etc.ng, although that is under construction right now. Uh, it should be up in the next couple of days. And finally, please fill out the feedback forms that you'll be getting through your emails and send back to us. Thank you and have a lovely evening. Thank you, Afalabi, for a good moderation. Thank, thank you, everybody. Thank you, David. Thank, thank you. you very much. Have a okay. wonderful evening. God bless you. Goodbye. Okay, bye-bye, okay, everyone. Thank you. Bye, bye peace. Bye, peace. Bye. bye. bye.